Tuesdays with Ted, and today's guest is Ed Winslow, who I met through Brian Kurtz's Titans Accelerator Group. So welcome, Ed. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's uh, today Tuesday with Ted and Ed. So tell us a story about how you started your business. It's a really great story you were sharing with me. Well, gosh, you know, I, uh, I, you know, I, I never intended to end up owning a digital marketing agency, and uh, it was just a total fluke how I got into it. And um, it was a total fluke. You know, I, I was in the real estate business, and you know, I had I had owned I had owned some properties. Um, that was you know that was my original intent was to be a real estate investor i started out as a real estate broker in new york city and uh i worked with cb cbre which was a big commercial real estate firm and i worked with sotheby's in new york city and you know what was really interesting is that when i was you know when i started like when i got out of college you know so many years ago when i went to work at it was coldwell banker commercial real estate at the time you know they taught a very very focused local business development system and you know, I ended up being in the city. I went to work for two guys who were selling buildings in the city. And, you know, when I started, they said, you know, they said, what do you want to do? Do you want to be a leasing broker? Do you want to work in New York City? Do you want to work in the suburbs? What do you want to do? So I, I wanted to be in the city. And I said, well, I think I want to sell buildings because I, you know, I think I'd like to be in the investment real estate business. And they said, at the time, you know, right within the first 20 minutes when I started working there, they said, the manager of the office came in and he said, you know, we have a business development system here. And if you follow it, you will succeed. If you deviate and think you know better, you will fail. So do you think you can listen to what we have to say? And, you know, of course, I'm, you know, 22 years old or whatever at the time. I'm like, oh, yeah, OK. And so they said, OK, here's how it works. Find a territory of 350 property owners. And what you're going to do is you're going to go in, you're going to catalog all those buildings. And that's what we did. I went and I went up to the, I, I chose to work on the Upper East Side of Manhattan mm -hmm. because I thought the buildings there looked pretty nice. You know, they were, you know, there were five, six story buildings. And I went around all the blocks and I took pictures of every single building. And then I would paste them on, you know, back, this is like back in the, you know, the early, early 90s, yeah. right? Um, actually it was like 1989, I think when I started and we would take, you know, we, we use cameras back then. I don't know if anybody yeah. knows what a camera, like a camera with <laughs> like, like Kodak film. And you would, we would, I would take pictures of the buildings, take the film over to the camera store, get the pictures printed out and I would paste them on a page and I would get, you know, New York city had like an owner's book. So you could go through this really thick owner's book and you would get the address, you'd get the size of the building, the phone number of the owner wasn't always accurate, but at least you got yeah. something to work with. And I would create a catalog for every single block in my territory. And so I would have them, you know, I'd have these thin notebooks and you open it up. And on one side is the picture of the building, the description, the phone number. And on the facing page was like a notepad. And when I would write mm -hmm. every time I called somebody, I would put down, okay, you know, November 3rd, called and I, and I, um, and so there was a, there was a formula there, but yeah. what the way it worked is we rep you know, we were taught to represent sellers. So you get hired as the exclusive agent to market the property. And the way we were taught is that you just keep calling the same people over and over and you never <laughs> ask them if they want to sell a building, you say, Hey, there's a building down the street for sale. Would you have any interest in buying another building? If they were looking to, if they had any inkling of selling, they would, they would always say, and every single one of them said the same thing. They would say, well, why would I want to buy another building? I want to sell mine. Oh, you want to sell your building? Oh, gee, I didn't know that. Could I come take a look? Yeah. And there was a whole formula that we went through to, you know, get the exclusive listing to market the property for sale. But I worked from 66th Street to 86th Street, 5th Avenue to Lexington Avenue. And that's all I did for like 15 years. Wow. And like, I Kinda like McDonald's follow the formula and you'll succeed. It, it, it is. And you know, what's really interesting is that, you know, I mean, I did really well with it. It was great, but you know, it was, it was like the same thing over and over after a while, you know, it's, it's yeah. hard to stay focused like that over and over and over because you start to get good at it. And it's like, I want more. Yeah. 
And there's that's all there is. And what we found is that if you try to expand that territory, unless you own the company, your productivity would drop. You know, you want to try and add another hundred to your territory. You couldn't do it unless you were to hire somebody to do work for you. But what happened was you just couldn't produce anymore. So, you know, we found like these sweet spots. Yeah. And that that like and we would send out newsletters. Like one of the things that I did was I created a newsletter. And I would send these newsletters in the mail. It's like direct response marketing. And it was yeah. like a little case study type of thing. And it, it wasn't anything great. You know, we made it at a print shop and we, you know, we used to f fold them and stuff them into envelopes until our fingers were bleeding because, we, <laughs> right. And, um, but what we found is like, if you, and when we called the people in our, you know, the owners in our territory, the formula was to get eight of them on the phone a day. And if you got eight people on the phone, by nine o'clock in the morning, put the phone down. Don't make any more calls. Wow. <laughs> but some days would take you till seven o'clock at night. Or mm -hmm. once you started getting busy, you know, it was hard to continue to make those calls because doing the deals was the fun part. Making the cold calls and stuffing envelopes was not. But right. we found that if you want to create a consistent flow and avoid that peak and valley, that feast and famine, that you had to stay on it. So there were some things that we found. It's like one of the things we found is that if you stop your marketing, you are going at some point you're down the road, you're going to run out of steam. And right. You may get a lot of deals, but what's going to happen is all of a sudden either those deals are going to blow out or you're going to close them. And then you're going to wake up one day and it's like, OK, I have no business. So yeah. I gotta go back and I got to get through this, the pipeline full again. And that's that feast or famine thing. And, you know, so we found a couple things that your marketing needs to be consistent. You got to make your calls. You got to do your direct response marketing. Mm -hmm. So when I got years later, when I, I had one really amazing year, I had gone over to work at Sotheby's. I was working at Sotheby's for a couple of years. And um, uh, I had this one amazing year and I was like, I'm never going to be able to do this again. Uh, and so I took the money and I, you know, I was living in Connecticut, commuting into the city. I had three young kids at the time. And so I, I took the money and I went to a couple people that I knew and I said, okay, I want to start this real estate investment business. So we started to buy a couple properties and I started to make websites at the time for the buildings that we bought. Yeah. And um, that's when I started to figure out, okay, so we got a website built. Now, how do we get traffic to the website? Mm -hmm. You know, and so I at that, like, I just took what I knew and I knew that, you know, people were because I understood local markets and that's how CB really was built on a global basis is it's built one little niche neighborhood at a time, you know, sort mm -hmm. of like McDonald's. So, you know, like, that's what I know that that model is in my DNA. And so. One, I started to build the websites and I'm starting to think, well, how do I start to get traffic to these websites? Right. You know? And so I would take, you know, I would take like keywords and I would match it with a town name. You know, back then when I was doing this, nobody, there was like, nobody was doing local marketing. Yeah. That didn't even exist. And so I wasn't, you know, I wasn't very good at SEO at the time, but it was pretty easy to match a keyword with a town mm -hmm. because nobody else was doing it. And you would start to get the results and it started to work and one thing led to another i ended up uh i ended up um doing some drop shipping of a product um because we we had we had a concrete floor in a couple buildings that we bought that needed to a resurfacing system because we couldn't put tile or hardwood on the concrete because it raised the floor too high and yeah. violated code so i needed a solution and then, you know, fast forward, now we're getting into like 2006. And I had sent a couple contractors down to Tennessee to learn how to use these products. And um, I didn't want to, when these guys came back and they applied these coatings to our floors to make them look like tile, but it was a very thin coat. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to lose these guys. So I figured, well, why don't I create a website? And I'm going to optimize it and see if I can get some leads 
from local people looking to redo their floors. Mm -hmm. And that way I could keep these guys employed. And it just started to work. And then the real estate market, had, like at that point, it was 2006, 2007. The buildings that we bought, we sold because I, it was too hard to buy anything. The prices were so high, we're getting outbid. So I decided let's sell everything, reevaluate. And then around 2008, the market tanked. Yeah. And at that point, I'm like, well, what am I going to do? We, I, I have no buildings. I can't buy anything. The market's terrible. I don't want to go back into the city and be a broker again. And um, so I figured, well, you know, I've got this little concrete resurfacing gig going. And why don't I create a little website and see if I can um, generate, you know, sell, do some dropship products. Yeah. Because I heard about that at the time. And I did that and it worked. I created a little video, you know, I created a nice little website that explained what it is, a couple pictures. And that's when I started to get into the SEO. And I was ranking things at that point on a national basis. And I was getting people who were calling me and I was selling products. And the manufacturer down in Tennessee who was shipping the products for me said, how are you getting this business? Yeah. <laughs> And I told him, and he said, do you, could you do this for contractors? And I, you know, who, who need leads to buy our product. And I said, I, I don't know, I could try. And I, next thing you know, I've got like 15 or 20 contractors that are working with me. And that's when I started really developing this agency. And it was at a time when I was thinking about getting back into the real estate business, but I couldn't find my way back in because the markets were still pretty bad. Yeah. You know? that's when i started my agency right, right around 2010 and it was just working and then these contractors were getting people were saying to them how are you getting all this business and they you know they said well there's this guy in connecticut and <laughs> next thing you know i'm getting more business i ended up with you know radiology businesses and insurance agencies and custom aquarium builders in New York City and, you know, furnished office space businesses and painters. And, you know, I ended up with this business. I didn't know what an agency was. Yeah. I never even heard of a local marketing agency, but that's that's how I got into it. Those were and, the Wild um, West days, weren't they? And the SEO and <laughs> Yeah, they really were. I mean it was it was so different. You know, you could you could it, it was so much easier. But you know what? I will tell you that the the one thing is that the industry the, the SEO world, the in, in, internet marketing world, it, to, to me, it's still based on the same core principles, mm -hmm. right? You, you need your page to be, you know, right on, you know, Google, Google, you know, it's Google's a computer, you know, so you want to be able to program Google. You know, I always think about, you know, like the story about Bill Gates, when he learned how to, when he started getting into computers, they used to, they used to like a a hole, like almost like a hole puncher and they would punch holes in a card and they would stick it in the computer and the computer would react yeah based on what you punched in right and seo is really the same thing so your web pages are sort of like those little yeah you know cards so what you have to do is you need to program your page so that the google being the computer will crawl your page and understand what it's all about and so there's all these things that Google is looking at in regards to what's on your page. Yep. But no matter how good it is, like, I mean, there's some people that will argue that, yes, sometimes you can rank things with perfect pages. Mm -hmm. You know, but the reality is, is that way the Google is set up is they're measuring not only what's on your page, but if you took 10 websites and they each had the same page and it was all perfect. Yeah. Why would one site why would they rank one site higher than another? Well, now you've got it. Now you've got backlinks, mm -hmm. you know, backlinks linking from other sites. The backlink thing is almost more like a popularity contest. Right. You know, the, the more credible the site is that links to you, um, the more relevant it is, the more you're going to rank on the, on the search engine. So if you took 10 different sites that are all the same, now it's the backlinks that push you up. Mm -hmm that today is the same basic concept as what you had years ago the difference today what's really happened is that you know digital marketing 
um, is, and you know, these local marketing agencies have become like a real business. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of players. There's a lot of big companies. Um, it's really evolving. One of the things that I see is, um, that in a lot of cases, there's not a lot of difference between webs, one website or another, mm -hmm. other than the logo frequently. Yeah. You know, a lot of times you can go to, you can do a search, you can land on a page and you can get the same product from the, you know, there's 10 of them right on page one. Yeah. That you, and plus you've got a couple of pay-per-click ads and you, maybe you have your Google, my business, local maps. So you've got, you know, what's that 13, you have about 17 options as a consumer. Well, what's the difference between one and another? And so that's where we are in the internet world today is like, how do you differentiate? How do you avoid competing just on price? Yeah. And that's a really, really big deal. Like, like in breakthrough advertising by Gene Schwartz, he talks about that specific problem. So how do you differentiate now? You know, another interesting story is I, I had a bathroom remodeled uh, this this year and I went online looking for bathroom remodelers and I couldn't relate to anybody who came up. Yeah. On page one for bathroom. Remodelers. There's some pretty so bad websites that. out there. <laughs> well, it's not that. They're, it, they're, yes, but they're only they're, they're they're like, you know, online yellow page ads in a way. Mm -hmm. now, they all say the same thing. So I, I, I wasn't you know, it's like oh, oh, they're all saying. Hey, I've been, you know, building bathrooms for 25 years. I'm great. And every business in the world is doing that today, you know, especially in, you know, primarily local markets. Yeah. So how do you differentiate yourself? Well, you know, Gene Schwartz has the answer, you know, and um, what he talks about, one of the things that Gene Schwartz talks about in breakthrough advertising is what happens when you're first to market. And then other people start to copy you and all of a sudden your market share starts to go down to the point where the only one who's getting the business is the cheapest price. Yeah. So how do you solve that problem? Well, that brings us full circle right around to what we talked about in regards to identification factors. And identification factors as it applies to SEO is a huge winner mm -hmm. because you can find new income streams um you can educate the consumer you know you think about like the bathroom guys yeah you know, imagine if you had you know my bathroom that i renovated is small it's a small bathroom and when i if imagine if you created if you were a bathroom remodeler and you created case study after case study after case study and it's on your website and i could go on your website and i could look at all these different projects that you completed there's a now there's an identification that I have with that website. Mm -hmm. He's differentiating himself from everybody else, you know, plus the fact that case studies can easily rank uh, because you're, you know, targeting towns and different, a lot of different keywords, but right. that's where this, um, that's where this identification factor comes in. And um, I spoke, I spoke about this in the Titans group, uh, you know, early on, um, you know, I, I had gone through breakthrough advertising and I really dug into it and tried to really figure out what is this book all about? And um, one of the things that really, really connected to, with me are identification factors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, one of the sites that Pel I'm going to use the, the I'm going to use Peloton as an example. Peloton has sort of changed their website a little bit recently. So I'm not seeing what I saw six months ago, but what they do in, in the Peloton site is they focus on all kinds of different profiles. Yeah. You know, for example, like there could be like a picture of a mom with two young kids down in her built out basement. So, you know, a mom, that's a market. Mm -hmm that's a new income stream because for Peloton, there is a consumer. It's a young, it's a mom with a couple of kids, doesn't have time to work out. So it's not so much the product that is the consumer. Right. And you can do that over and over. You know, there's another picture that I recall of a, like a guy who might've been in his thirties and 
that he had what looked like pictures on the wall, but one was a framed out picture of like, like his high school or college track medal. Mm -hmm. And then there's another framed out picture of his track Jersey. So there's an, an, there's another market. There's the young, you know, there's the athlete, you know, the high school or college athlete on the Peloton. That's another market, you know, and there are certain things that you can sell to that profile that the mom may not buy. The mom might buy yoga mats, yeah. maybe some stretch cords, maybe a Pilates thing, whereas maybe the, the you know, the male in ex-athlete is is a different market then you've got you know then you can move up the ladder and you've got you know you they've got pictures of you know they've got pictures of guys who are in their 60s so maybe it's a you know well-to-do um you know corporate executive yeah you know it's a nice house that's another market they have and the, the peloton for, granddads and the peloton grandmothers you know <laughs> So now you see what's interesting about that is that all of a sudden now you've opened up all these uh, markets and you can use your Google search strategies uh, to uh, to capitalize on this. Mm -hmm. And there's so many different ways uh, over the years. Like I sort of knew this intuitively as I was building my agency business and I just didn't really know. I didn't really understand why it worked other than I had my reference to, you know, my, my early real estate brokerage that enabled me to understand little micro markets yeah. and that how much business there can be in one little micro market. And that's what I work with. When I work with clients today, um, I'll, I'll tell you a couple of, you know, really cool little stories. You just if you want to stop me no i love uh, please, this but, but i can i can roll for a while and forever you're taking breakthrough advertising applying it to seo which makes you stand out because most people well, it's use not those just keyword tools and they just do generic phrases right right well there's there's more to it just the it's it's not just breakthrough advertising it's the brilliance breakthrough by jane schwartz also because now you're getting into picture words and picture words are really amazing this is an amazing uh, and I'll, I'll tell you a couple of great i'll tell you a couple of great stories um so about four or five years ago i started to work with a um an insurance agency and when i sat down with them they were they were in an you know an affluent town you know in fairfield county connecticut uh, actually darien connecticut and so when i you know knowing that insurance is sort of pretty pretty bland um you know most people don't really care about insurance until they have a problem yeah you know they don't really want to talk to insurance agents and get to know an insurance agent it's like it's, it's a little painful right so i'm thinking well how even if i can get you ranking number one you know for and you know home insurance car insurance you know business insurance how can I help you convert? How, how is that going to convert to a client? Like why is somebody, so I could see somebody going and doing a search, but it's like, well, what, how do you differentiate yourself? Yeah. So what I did was my net, you can see on, on my board here, it's nichequest.com is my business. And so what I did was I sat down with these, when I was sitting down with these guys, I said, okay, here's your strategy. And this is where I always start with a business. I'm like, tell me about your strategy. Let's, let's, let's tell me about your business. And they always start, I'll always sell car insurance, home insurance, business insurance. I'm like, okay, let's start breaking that down because we want to come up with a strategy where you can write a blog that you can rank on Google, but we want to come up with a repeatable formula so that you're not trying to write the next great novel for each blog, because mm -hmm. what you don't want, is to have somebody sit down and write a blog and it's like okay what am i going to write about right i don't know where to go with this i don't know what to write about so what i did was i said okay let's break it down and i said let's start with car insurance and i said what kind of cars do you i said is all car insurance the same no it's different depending on what kind of car you i'm like okay like how about ferrari like ferrari insurance 
if you want to buy a Ferrari, like, is that the same as like a Ford? No, 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 that's different. Oh, okay. Well, how about like, you know, a Lamborghini? Yeah, that's different too. You know, that's a different than, you know, each car is a little different. They're going to have a different, you know, there's different factors. Right. Um, I said, how about Tesla? cars oh yeah tesla is different because they're made out of aluminum when they get into an accident it's more expensive than even a ferrari so the tesla insurance is even more so i said okay let's go online and let's do a search for ferrari insurance let's start there so we go online we took a the, look at the top three sites on a national basis because i want to look and see what is ranking i even looked at keyword tools yeah because the keyword tools are going to tell me nobody's searching for that but i know that's wrong um so what I did was I look at the top three sites and it's like, okay, what's on your page? What's on each one of these pages that Google likes enough to rank them? And so I found, so I took a little bit from this side, a little bit from that side, a little bit from that side and said, okay, we're going to create better information based on what's on the top, the top three sites on a national basis, but we're going to localize it. We're going to add towns like Darien, Greenwich, Westport, yeah. in New Canaan, we're going to, you know, words like Fairfield County, you know, maybe words like Connecticut, maybe near New York City, you know, stuff like that. So we're going to try because we know that that's not very competitive. So mm -hmm. we're going to use any kind of little signal we can to get a little edge so that we can get a ranking because we don't really know how people search. Yeah. So anyway, we put this on um, what 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 happened there was we went after then we started to so we went into the cars, we went deep. We went into like in Connecticut, there's a uh, there's a, a racetrack called Lime Rock, Lime Rock, which is in Litchfield County, Connecticut, up near Massachusetts. And you've got like I've been up there a few times to watch the vintage car racing weekend, which is really cool. It's all Porsches and Jaguars and Lotuses and that kind of thing. Well, there are people that are you know, well-to-do people that are, you know, almost like uh, car hobbyists and they like yeah. to race and they go up there on the weekends. Well, what about racetrack? You know, like vintage car insurance for vintage cars or ra there's another kind of insurance called racetrack. Each one of these can be another block. And that's going, these are each one are like identification factors. Yeah. So when somebody, you know, if you're, if you want to insure your vintage car that you're going to race up at Lime Rock, you're not going to just search for car insurance. Yeah. You're going to search for something related to racetrack or vintage car or something, something like that. And when somebody lands on that page and it's got some information, it's like you need, you know, here are the top six things that you need to insure your car. You have now created like an amazing piece of information and that is your identification factor. The Ferrari is your identification factor. So they perceive you as an expert because you're ranking well in Google and you're giving them information about that specific topic. The other thing about it is that nobody forgets you. That's yeah. one of the key things that comes right out of the Brilliance Breakthrough is how to talk and write so that nobody will ever forget you. Mm -hmm. So that's one part of it. So when you start to, like you think back, go to back for a second to the, the bathroom, remodeler. If you had case studies over and over and over that I could relate to, like, I'm going to remember you, like, I'm going to come back to you because I'm not, I may not pull the trigger today, but I'm doing my research. And it's like, man, that's the site that I remember. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is saying, Hey, I'm great. Been in business 25 years. This guy's saying, let me tell you how we did this. Let me tell you how long it took. Let me tell you about the things you need to keep in mind. Let me tell you, you know, the whole story. Yeah. And that's what works. And what happened with this insurance agency is we went into, uh, we, we, we created pages on fine art insurance. We, and we called, we called them guides, you know, just to give them a little bit of credibility, right? Mm -hmm. give them a little bit of authority. So it would be like the fine art insurance guide, the jewelry insurance guide you know, the, um, you know, the yacht insurance guide, this sailboat insurance guide, the Tesla insurance guide, on and on and on. And what happened, this is really an amazing story. I got a call a couple of weeks ago from a woman who needed some help uh, with her, her marketing. 
And she said, I remember you from four years ago hearing you talk about that insurance agency. And she said, she remembered everything. She remembered the Tesla insurance and the Ferrari insurance and the fine art insurance. That is right out of Gene Schwartz breakthrough advertising. That is where now we're taking identification factors. We're taking picture words. Yeah. And we're applying it to SEO and you're ranking over and over and over and over and over. You are now standing out. Now what happened? So interesting, four years later, this woman could recite it exactly as I took, she heard me speak four years prior. <laughs> and what happened, what was really interesting about this is that with this insurance agency, um, a lot of their existing clientele now saw their website and it's like oh you're fine art insurance you're jewelry insurance you're tesla and you're this and you're the yacht and you're on and on and on yeah people remember that and the word of mouth took off that company has is today is the premier high net worth insurance agency in this area nice and that's how it happened because seo works many different ways we live in a social world People see, they hear, they remember. But if all you do is say, hey, I'm the best insurance agency, been in business for 30 years, nobody remembers that. That's, that's what everybody that's, says, yeah. That's not going to convert. Yeah. So I've done so much, and, and it's this, it becomes a repeatable strategy. Um, you know, I'm doing a project now for I have a client that's in the business brokerage business and they're business brokers, right? And so I said, you know, I follow the same model. Well, you want sellers, just like a real estate broker would want sellers because you want to get retained as the exclusive agent mm -hmm. to, to, you know, to sell the business. Um, so what I did was I came up with a blog template and I, I got it ranked right away for like selling your gas station in Naples, Naples, Florida. And I put that one on my website and I showed the client. I said, look, I'm ranking number one. And I'm outranking all these big sites in your market. And I did it on my site, which isn't even relevant to being a business broker. I said, imagine <laughs> if we follow this format and every week we write a new blog, you know, selling your gas station, selling your RV park, selling your law firm, selling your, you know, concrete company. Now imagine where we'd be, you know, in a year, two years, three years, we've got 150 of these things out there. Right. So the person who is selling, you know, how, and you can use those pages many, many different ways, you know, whether it's you're, you're talking to somebody at a networking meeting, somebody refers you and you could say to the client, oh, by the way, let me send you, give me your email. I'm going to send you a link to what you need to know if you're looking to sell your CPA firm, because we've already got it on our website. Right you know that boom it's the conversion is so high no other no other uh business broker in the country's got that model really yeah you know so now you've got a tool that says boom i'm the expert let me send it over to you i'll see you next tuesday at three o'clock yeah you when you have that meeting it's like you're pre-sold you're yeah. starting you've broken through the trust barrier Right. And you're already yeah. now, now you're starting at the beyond the trust. You've already, you haven't had to go up that mountain and prove the trust. You've yeah. already, you're starting already at the top and moving. And down. they discovered the trust by doing a Google search. So. Right. Right. It's perfect. So it works. So, you know, SEO can work many different ways. I've done, I did this, um, um, I did this for a real estate broker in New York city and he, who came to me this is like back in 2014 and he was a commercial office leasing broker in New York City and um, so when I started with him I said I don't think you're ever going to rank for office space for rent in New York City I said hey like that's just not the strategy even if you could rank for that it's going to be expensive it's going to be hard to maintain and I said I don't even know if the, the conversion is going to be there so I said if I'm looking for office space in New York City, I'm just not looking for office space for rent. The first thing I want to know if I'm going to start a search is I want to know how much it costs. Mm -hmm. So let's think about the word 
office space cost. Now, if you use the keyword tools, they're going to tell you that nobody really searches that way. Yeah. You know, they're, they're going to, so, so that, so I went with office space cost and I said, more specifically, I think I'm going to search either by neighborhood or I might even search by building. Yeah. So if you do a search for office space cost, the world trade center, this client comes up at the top. He's got what's called the featured snippet. Mm -hmm. and his blog ranks number one, that blog post ranks number one, he outranks the owner of the world trade center, multi-billion dollar company. It's a one man operation, right? And we fought, and if you look at that particular blog, you know, we, what we did was we used bullet points. We used numerical data, like, you know, um, this building is, you know, 93 floors. It's 1.7 million square feet. It's got 72 elevators. It's near the such and such subway. It's near the path train. It's five miles from, you know, from, or, you know, it's three miles from Jersey city. It's near Hoboken. It's, you know, we're, we're giving all, we're, we're throwing in all this relevant geographic data and numerical data full of points through in a couple of floor plans. If you go to a search for like office space costs at the Chrysler building, yeah, you're going to see he's got the same kind of result. Mm -hmm. You're going to see that the same blog format applies to whether it's the empire state building, the Chrysler building, the World Trade Center, and on and on. And so when you do a search, when people start doing searches, this guy keeps popping up over and over and over. And he's got all this data about cost. He knows the market. He's explained that, you know, he's established himself as an expert. He's not out there saying, hey, look at me. I'm the most office, awesome uh, real estate broker in New York City. Yeah. I've done all these deals. He's yeah. not saying he's giving information he's creating these you know he's opening up new markets now the i i've told this story uh in groups before and people you know seos have, have laughed at me and said nobody searches that yeah it's easy to rank for that it's uh, there's no competition i'm like well first of all Google wouldn't have put him up there in the featured snippet if, if it wasn't valuable. Yeah. Secondly, he gets something like 500 or a thousand visits a month on that World Trade Center blog. And then that's interesting because if you look at the keyword tools, the keyword tools are going to tell you there's nobody searching that. Right. So, uh, you know, this, these strategies, you know, so what, one of the things that I've learned, there's a couple of things here is digital marketing starts with your strategy. It doesn't start with tactics. Yeah. You know, it starts with your strategy. What's your plan? Because now, like the real estate guy, he's got a plan every week. Okay. I wrote about the World Trade Center. I wrote about, you know, I've written about the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building. Um, let's just start talking about buildings and neighborhoods. And it's like, just keep working your way around New York City. And, you know, because the, you know, the commissions are high. Yeah. So you don't really need much. You don't need much traffic. And once somebody gets in the site and then they look and say, oh, you've got information on all these other buildings, yeah. you a wealth of information, and you're going to continue to maintain those positions. He's maintained those positions. So every time somebody comes back and searches time after time after time, yeah. it really, that is how it works. It goes back to my old CB formula of working that neighborhood and being mm -hmm. in front of the same people over and over and over with the same message. So you can yeah. see how it all works. And that's, that's, that's how I, um, that's how I've done it. I'm, I'm actually, I, I came up with a, a strategy for a comp, uh, a business and, um, it's called uh, Carter's home gym. And, uh, their initial strategy was to provide gym equipment for lease in residential homes. And I'm like, man, that's a, I, I think that's going to be a tough battle because you're trying to lease when you're competing against everybody else who wants to buy. Like, do you want to lease equipment in your house for, a right. you know? And I said, I think what you want to do is go a different direction. I think what you want to do is you want to go after the commercial market. So, and why don't you add gym design into mm -hmm. 
your mix. So the strategy being um, gym equipment and design for uh, seniors, senior centers and assisted living facilities. We'll write another one on gym equipment and design for multifamily complexes. You know, because now, you know, and on and on, you could, you know, there's so many different niches. It could be for hotels. Right. The, you know, you say there, there's, there's, there's different markets that you can snuff out when you start to go this way. And you can start to think when you start to think this way, now, now you're thinking, now you're creating like a sales strategy. It's not just right. a CEO strategy. It's a sales strategy. But Google sees you as an expert when you write this way. And it mm -hmm. becomes, you're following the same formula over and over. So now you've minimized your time. You found a way to get the ranking. You're educating Google as to what you're about. The consumers can see yeah. the expertise. And you can you can take that model for the gym people and you can break it down. You can start, you know, what I did was I started them out with one really long blog. It was like 4,000 words. And mm -hmm. we called it a, you know, we called the page a guide. And so let's break it down. What would you need to know about a gym? Yeah. You know, if you were getting into the design, there's so many factors. You know, there's the lighting. There could be the towels. There could be the floor mats. There could be pictures on the wall, you know, and let's just keep w which kind of equipment, you know, treadmills and elliptical machines. And, you know, each one is going to be a little bit different. And then once you've got that one main guide, you can start to build around it with smaller blogs. Yeah. About, you could just now, instead of having one paragraph on that page about lighting, you can create a whole page and get into the lighting, all the different kinds of lighting instead of just having a series of general topics. And then do you tie that content into reviews of that equipment? You know what? You could. You could. You could start to get into reviews of, um, I mean, once you've got the model, yeah. once you've got this content model down, you can repeat it over and over and over. And, yeah. um, you know, this is, this is, um, it's, it's amazing how well it works. Uh, I, I'll, uh, let me tell you one more. I'm going to tell you another one. That's okay. <laughs> a, a real, this, this, this is a really super awesome one. There's a guy that I work with out on the West coast. He's out in uh, Oregon. And one day, this was like six years ago, uh, I asked him, I said, anything interesting come in from, you know, the internet, you know, that you've completed. And he said uh, he was a painting contractor and, you know, he'd gotten into the concrete floor coatings. And so um, he said, well, yeah, we just, we just painted a, um, a fuel tank. And like, oh, fuel tank, that's interesting. Like, where, how'd you get that? You know, well, it came from the internet. I'm like, okay, that's amazing. Like, wh wh what does a fuel tank look like? Like, I had no idea. Like, yeah. a fuel tank to me is like something I put in my gas, my lawnmower, right? Well, this was, he's like, well, no, this was a big fuel tank. And I'm like, well, where was it? Is it well, it was at a, I mean, I have to pull this out at these people. Yeah. And um, so he said, well, it was at a lumber yard. And the lumber yard had their own trucks. So they need a lot of fuel to fuel their own trucks. And so they have, you know, big trucks come in and they fill this big tank. I'm like, well, how big is it? And he's like, well, it's like 25 feet tall. I'm like, well, how does it, what does it sit on? Well, it sits on four legs. I'm like, okay, now I'm starting to get a vision. And I'm like, well, what was the matter with it? Well, well, it got really dirty and it was, the paint was starting to chip off and it was, the rust was starting to corrode. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, that's sort of interesting. Like, how did how do you how do you what'd you do? Well, we you know we we had to get all the rust off, and we had to get all the chipping paint off. I'm like, well, how'd you do that? He said, well, we use this thing called a bead blaster. I'm like, what what the heck is that? Yeah. Well, that that's that's like a it's like a power washer that shoots like these little tiny little ball bearings that are, and in this case, they use dry ice ball bearings so that when you spray it. It takes all the it, it it takes all the corrosion off and all the paint chips off, and when it drops down on the ground, it it melts. So mm -hmm. there's, so there's no mess. I'm like, okay, how do you get up there? How do you, how do you get up there? 
well, we use these lifts, a scissor lift, and, and then what kind of, and like, what kind of paint? And I said, well, what brand? And he told me the different, you know, the brand of paint that he used. And I'm taking notes the whole time. And I'm like, well, would you like more of that kind of business? It's like, yeah. He said, we made a lot of money on that. Mm -hmm. said, well, why don't we write a blog and we'll call it Metal and Steel Fuel and Water Tank Painting in Portland, Oregon. Because I want to, I'm like, okay, I want to rank for steel. I want to rank for metal. Yeah. Uh, you know, I want to see if we can squeeze in rust removal. And if you do a search for like metal tank painters in Oregon, you'll see that blog today is still ranking number one since 2015. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that that he's gotten probably, he's probably done $2 million worth of uh, metal tanks painting in the last six years from that blog. Talking about a small niche market. <laughs> you don't, it doesn't get much traffic, but when it does, the conversion is really high. So there, so when somebody does a search and you land on a page and it's got a couple bullet points, it's the same formula yeah. as the business broker, as the real estate guy in New York, as the insurance guy. It's the, it's the same thing over and over and over. It's breaking all these things down by niches. These are, these are identification factors you're using you know, picture, you know, picture words, you're using pictures. And when Gene Schwartz was doing his direct response marketing, probably didn't, he was probably using words more than he was using images. Right. And, um, you know, that's how it works. And then, you know, from there you can, you know, one of the things that we do to really boost these is what, you know, we use, um, you know, high, you know, we, I, we, we use press releases to promote. So you can write a piece of content and then we'll use like a, you know, and sometimes we'll use like a premium press release that might get on like Yahoo or Morningstar picked up by Google News. And we'll just mm -hmm. take a press release and, and rewrite, you know, we'll just talk about the blog that's on the website and we link it from here to there, which is exactly what we used to do when I first started out because we used to do, remember the days when you would do article marketing? Yeah e-sign articles so you'd write you write a blog you post something on e-sign articles you link it over well yep. it's the same formula today except that you're using other sources you know not just you know the article thing has sort of gone away right um so that that's is great. that's the that's the that's that's it you know so it's i think um, one of the takeaways i got is you talk to a lot of business owners they don't think they have anything to say or any stories if you ask the right questions, they open up and tell you incredible details that are relevant yeah. to the content. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They, yeah. they have so much information because they're talking to people during the day. Yeah. Every time they talk to somebody, they don't say the same thing. Right. You know, they're experts. And, They've been doing it for years. Yep. Yeah. And whatever great. people are asking, they're looking for that online. I can't wait to try this on LinkedIn with the the picture words and profiles just to see how that works and write content related to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it's be interesting. It's just think about, think about what, you know, the way I've built this business, my business, um, you know, I built it many different ways, but um, you know, I just, I just got a really big client that came in big company, big corporate client in the furnished office space business. And it was a referral from my guy in New York City. And the way that I got in and closed the deal, they were going to re-up their existing agency, which they really weren't happy with, but they didn't know what to do. I met with them. I got the call. I don't, this just happened like within one week. But I, I said, listen, when you do any kind of marketing, I don't care whether it's pay-per-click or Facebook ads or your videos or whatever, you got to start with your strategy. And I said, mm -hmm. let me show you how, what we did. You know, if you look at what we did for, you know, this guy here, Mitch, and how we got him ranking number one for the World Trade Center, like you're not, your agency is not doing that for you. Right. That's what you need to do. And whether you used to hire me or you work, go work with somebody else, you've got to start with your strategy. And there's so many of these different factors. Yeah. And that's what closed the deal. And it, you know, to that was that 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 was one of the biggest um that was a, one of the biggest clients that I've ever brought in. And it's a it's a global client. And um 
they don't have this strategy on a global basis. So it's, you know, and what's interesting about it is that once you've got it, you, you know, you can just sort of repeat it, you know, yeah. that's, yeah, that's that it, it really is. Oh, yeah, this really has been great. So nichequest.com niche and connect com. with you, connect with you on LinkedIn, obviously. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I'm Ed. actually re, re, I'm redo. I'm, I'm in the process of redoing niche quest to, I'm going to create like different pricing packages on there that are going to be visible. So you can, people can go online and, you know, and actually see how much this stuff costs. So yeah, definitely worth the investment. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks, Ed. We'll see so, you, uh, see you on LinkedIn and everywhere else. Yeah. Thanks, Ted. Is there anything else? Anybody, if you have any other questions, you know, fire away, I'd be happy I don't to. I see uh, any other questions. A lot of good comments. Uh, I think people like this, the whole strategy. Like most people don't have a strategy. They just kind of willy nilly. Let's create some content the, the, once the in a strategy, while. The strategy is the key. It's yeah. the key. It's, it's what drives everything. It's not tactics. Everybody yeah. is so focused on tactics. It's yeah. not because the tactics don't work if you don't have the strategy. It starts with the strategy. And once you got that, then you can replicate it. So yeah, that's the key to take away from your business. Anybody's cool. business. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you very soon. All right. Thanks, Ted.